Hey, so I got such a praise report. I cannot wait. I could not wait to do this video. Um, hold on. I am just kind of moving things out the way a little so I can sit down. I had, okay, so all of this is a part, I'm limping, yeah, I'm limping. <laughs> um, all of this is a part of my praise report, though. So, um, first of all, I was up with the Lord since, what well, the Lord woke me up. It was like, it was after four and um, I got on up because I wanted to have some time. I needed to get ready because I had an eight o'clock doctor's appointment and I needed to get ready and I wanted to have some time to sit before the Lord. And so I don't even know what part to talk to you about first. I definitely want to share my praise report. I want to share my praise report as a part of this um, lesson from today. And so let me do the praise report first. First of all, just to be able to get into the doctor as quickly as I did when I tell y'all that I was grateful um, because I have been limping. My knee has been, had been getting worse, um, which eventually it's an old injury that I have to now continue to get um, treat is an old injury from domestic violence. I'm just going to tell it like it is. <laughs> it's an old injury based from domestic violence that I experienced a long, long time ago. We're in the year 2024. And um, I got to date this stuff too. I, I am learning the importance of dating everything. So um, this is an injury. The injury actually occurred in 1992. <laughs> in 1992, for which I had surgery for it in another state, in, um, in my home state, my birth state, in 1996. So here we are. This is 2024. And I ended up going in to get a shot for this method, for um, my knee. So, in the process of doing this, and I'm going to give you this, like, I don't know, most people keep their, like, personal, that kind of personal thing, but I'm about to share this, because this is a whole testimony. So, um, in the process of calling, like, it was getting worse, and I needed to, for some things that are getting ready to happen, I needed to get my knee fixed, because what was happening, or get the shot in my knee, because what, um, what was happening is, it was becoming more and more difficult for me to just, like, do things around the house, like, wash dishes, you know, I go and I do some dishes, and then I'm, like, out of it, because my knee done locked up, or my knee starts hurting, like, like, it was, it was starting to become a problem, so I would, um, made the phone call first and when i made the phone call like normally like I, i'm quite sure you all have had this experience where you're calling a doctor to be seen for something and you'll get an appointment that is weeks away like like months away like a couple of months out you know and so i called <laughs> first of all this is my first praise report because i prayed i prayed see let me let me share this let me let me share this there's a scripture that i had read a while ago in some former studies but this scripture hit home with me it hit so home with me that um i just i uh <laughs> it like it's it's something that i am quick to do now what it is was let me find i'm trying to find it i'm sorry okay so here it is it's first kings it's chapter 16 i keep putting my glasses there i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm just so excited okay so it's first kings chapter 16 it is verse number uh where is it 12 12 12 12 12 am i in the right place is it first kings chapter 16 maybe it's chronicles first chronicles chapters i thought it was kings though i know i know like it's chapter 16 
hold on y'all like i've got to find this because i've got to share this because it is so important and it's a big part of my testimony and probably i'm in the wrong so let me look at chronicles i'm going to find this this is important it is important i found it I found it. I'm saying Kings. It's Chronicles. Okay, so Chronicles basically is about the Kings. It's like a retelling of everything, and sometimes you get a little bit more. And so this had to do with King Asa. So King Asa had basically stepped out and did some stuff that he wasn't supposed to do. And like he 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 just he pushed ahead of the Lord and he got called on it by the Lord <laughs> through a prophet. He got called on it. And so, like, there was no remorse, no nothing, and, and God struck him with with uh, a melody. Like, so anyway, this is what it says. It says, and in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet, in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So, Asa rested with his father's. He died in the 41st year of his reign. Now listen, when I read that, first of all, it was gout, y'all. But when I read that, I'm like, he didn't, like, he only sought the physicians. He did not seek the Lord. And then you have the story, of course, of the woman with the issue of blood, right? And she basically spent all the money that she had seeking these different doctors so that she could get healed and nobody was able to heal her. And so finally, when she, she had been hearing about King Jesus, right, or Jesus Christ, right, because I know he's king now, but back then, you know, not only did they not, not recognize him, but I don't think he had yet got that title of king, God, but God gave him, he's king now, he's king, God, God, like, anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, so, she had been hearing all these different things, right? So he passes by her and goes into the gatherings, and that's where he ended up healing that man that had the legions on him. And then the people from Gadara, which was a city, you know, the gatherings, the people from Gadara, they was like, you got to go. Like, leave. <laughs> leave now. They was mad because cause all their pigs, all their swan went over <laughs> <laughs> over the cliff and they was mad about that because they used those to worship their false gods so they was like you got to go so jesus now comes back and he passes by this woman again and she's like i'm not missing this like like literally like if you could see like if you could read it and see what happened because he comes back you know and so so he's passing by this woman so she has to name you we as women we know blood stinks blood stinks she said this issue of blood she's been unclean for all this time you know she's been trying to get seen nobody has been able to heal her so he's passing by again and she's like you know what so you know because she had covered herself but she had to do more than cover herself because blood stinks she covered herself so that she would not be identified so that she and all she was thinking is if i could just touch the hem of his garment but she had to have like kind of cleaned herself like kind of like you know, so that she could cover and nobody would smell her. Because, listen, one of the things we know is you will smell a person that has an issue that they've been dealing with for a long time. You will smell it. Like, you can smell sickness. When a person is sick, you can smell it. There's an odor. So, so anyway, she was able to get her healing, right? You know, she came up behind her. We know the story. She got her healing. Who was able to heal her was the Lord. Now, here's this king. He has a foot malady a foot disease it says that and his malady was severe and it says but he did not seek the lord he only sought the physicians so because of that i seek the lord and what i do is i pray i don't now, let's not get this misunderstood i still see the doctors but i have learned to pray for these doctors and pray for their nurses and and pray for the staff right and so 
I was talking to the Lord first. I'm like, I need to get a shot in my knee so that I can be fast, so that I can do this walking that's going to need to be done, and so that I can ride in this car for the, the amount of time that I'm going to need to ride. Like, I need to get a shot in my knee. And so I was like, and normally, they, like, when they give appointments, they give Buck Rogers appointments. I said, I don't care what time they give me. I just want to get in so that I can get this done. So I called the nurse and I, when I, I mean, I called the office and when I called the office, you know, I talked to them after I had prayed, I talked to them and I had said, you know, this is what's going on. This is who my doctor is. This is what happens. I don't care what, what time you have. I said, I don't care what day you have. I just need to get in. So she said, hold it. She asked me for my date, my date of birth, you know, my name, date of birth and everything. She looked me up. She said, um, hold on, let me look and see. Come to find out. She had an 815 appointment. A 815 appointment. She said she had been trying to get this appointment to different ones and they were not refusing that. And I said to her, that's because that appointment was for me. <laughs> and so I was like, I'll take it. I will take it. And then it just so happened. I was like, oh shoot. After I took it, this was an appointment that was on the day that my husband had to work. So I said to my husband, I said, I need, I really need this appointment. I said, if you could drive me there, I'll take a cab back home. Right. <laughs> so he drove me there. But in the meantime, I'm talking to the Lord. I'm like, you know, well, we're set up, you know, I'm, I'll take a cab home, but I really would appreciate it if my husband could take me home. And so all of that worked out today. Number one, all of that worked out today. And when I tell you, when I tell you, I feel like, I personally feel like it worked out because I prayed first. Because I talked to the Lord who orders our steps. I, I really feel, but that's not all. So I get to the doctor today, this morning. I get to the doctor. And while I'm at the doctor, um, <laughs> while I'm at the doctor, now I get for the shot. Okay, so... Um, one of the things that I've been treated for for a while is diabetes. So I'm just going to put that out there. Um, and like, I just took my blood sugar. I just took my blood sugar and my blood sugar was like 98 or something. Just to give you an idea of how good I'm doing. I talked to the doctor today. He said my A1C is going down. When I tell y'all like my weight, I don't, I don't have a problem with telling y'all this. I used to weigh, like, I, I've weighed no more than maybe, like, 215. I, there was a time that I hit 220, but I would come back down. So, my weights used, usually was, like, between, like, 218, 210, somewhere in between there. I now weigh 198. I've gotten as far down as 194. Five. That's the lowest I got. I'm trying to get lower. I'm trying to get lower, but I'm telling y'all, I'm under 200 now. Just to give you an idea of how things working out, and I don't mind telling you this. This is a part of my testimony. There's some people that don't like to tell you. There's some people that'll be like, you don't supposed to tell. Look, that's on them. That is them. I'm about to share with you my testimony. If I'm coming to you real with my hair be looking crazy, which I'm okay with how my hair looks now. <laughs> But when I be coming to you and my hair be looking crazy I, or my hair be wrapped up or I have stuff in my hair. Look, if I keep, if I could be real in that area, why can't I be real with like stuff that's going on in my body? Right. So I'm telling you this. Um, and I have no problem telling you this again. This is a part of my testimony. So there are certain medications and certain um, treatments that when you're dealing with diabetes that you can get and you cannot get. And the purpose for these different ones is because they, they want to watch the type of medicines that they give you because they don't want to give you anything that's going to spike your sugars. Okay, so I, I know everybody is with me with this or understand with this. So I went into the doctor, the medicine that I'm supposed to get. Um... They had sent in an approval for it. And when they sent the approval in for the medicine, they said that the medicine was approved. But because of the dates that was on it, they approved this medicine from 2023, which is last year, all the way to 2050. This is 2024. We're talking about another 25, 26 years that I'm approved for this medicine. So they said when I saw this date, 
They was like, when they saw this date, they was like, that can't be correct. So they resent it, and my insurance company was like, no. <laughs> so they were talking to me about this, and they was like, you know, and, and they tried to look for other medicines, and they were like, you know, we can't get the proof on the other medicines, and so you only have this other medicine, which the other, the second medicine is called Kenalog. The first medicine is called Zilretta. Zilretta is, is simply a shot that goes into the knee, like they literally like stick the needle into the knee and it coats that area um, so that I could walk. And what it does is it releases um, like a little at a time so that it doesn't mess with the blood sugar. And because they got denied, they um, ended up giving me this medicine called Kenalog. And the Kenalog releases all at once it does the same as the zaretta but it releases all at once and because it releases all at once it spikes the sugar up really high so y'all know i came home and took my blood sugar because i was about to like i was about to snap because i'm like you i'm like look i'm not leaving out of here without this shot number one so if i had to take the kenalog i'm gonna take the kenalog but you know it's, it's gonna work like like my whole thing is is it gonna work <laughs> <laughs> I ain't worried about the spiking of the sugar. I just wouldn't need to know if it's going to work. And so they was like, yeah, you know, it's going to work. You know, the biggest concern is the sugar spike. So um, I'm like, let's do this. Like, <laughs> let's do this. Let's get this done. So we got it done. And um, I talked to the nurse. I was like, I need to know the name of everything because I'm about to call my insurance. And I'm about to snap on them since I got to call them anyway, you know, for some other stuff. So I'm like, I'm about to call them and I'm about to let them have it, right? Did you hear what I said? I said, I'm about to call them and I'm about to, I'm about to snap on them, right? Snap. So I got home. First thing I did was I got my water. So I started drinking this water because I already know sugar spike. Let me drink the water. Kind of flush my system. <laughs> so I did that. Um, and y'all know I don't like water. If you've seen any of my videos, I did a video and I actually said I do not like the taste of water. I bet you because I have a refrigerator that that do the distilled water or whatever. So yeah, I've drunk some water today and I'm going to keep drinking regular water. And maybe that had to happen to get me to drinking regular water. So you know, I'm all good. I'm all good because I'm going to be drinking water today. <laughs> plain water today. I will be drinking plain water today. So all things work together for the good, right? So um, <laughs> so anyway, I, I do that. I take my blood sugar. I'm thinking my blood sugar because I could literally feel this medicine, right? And I could like, I feel some type of way, right? So I come home, I take my blood sugar because I'm expecting my blood sugar to be super high. And it's like 96, you know, 96, 98, something like that. I'm like, okay, I can't fuss about that. <laughs> so I, I started talking to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, please, I need your help. I need your help. First of all, with my mouth, because this will get me in trouble. I need your help. I need, I need to know, like, I need your help with speaking and saying, and I just, you know, this is what's going on, you know, and, and I need your help. I need your help because I want to be able to talk to them and explain to them what's going on and get the results that's needed. But I also need to be able to do it in a way because I represent you. So I need your help. I needed a guard over my mouth. So anyway, I took care of the first thing with the insurance, because it was an insurance day. All day was insurance day. I had two different areas, dental and um, the medical. So I dealt with the dental first. And when it was all said and done, they was like, oh, we good. You know, it's just an error. They did da-da-da-da, you know, and it was just an error. But everything's all paid for. We all good. You covered da-da-da. So I got up, and I was like, thank you, Lord. I'm like, thank you. Thank you for letting this one go good. <laughs> So I'm like, thank you. So I'm like, okay, that was good. I'm ready for the next one. So I get on the phone with the next one. And I'm going, da-da-da, you know, and, and I, I've already seen the doctor. They've already given a shot. I don't know why, da-da-da, you know, I need y'all to explain this to me. So, and I kept questioning her because the big question for the doctors was the date. You know, this 20, so, so anyway, um, 
she kept saying, no, you know, I see this and this is approved. And, and so we need to find out. It is. So, so the lady, when I got off the phone with her, she said, well, I'm going to call over to your doctor's office, you know, to make sure that we have the right medicine, you know. And I'm like, okay, thank you. And she was going to call me back. And I called to the doctor's office too. And I told them, look, I just got off the phone with them. And they said, yes, I can take the, the medicine that they couldn't give me because of what they were told, um, which was the Zaretta. The first time they were told correctly. The second time they were told incorrectly. So I got a medicine that I should not have gotten <laughs> only because of the spike, only because of the spike. Um, and so anyway, I got off the phone with the nurse and she was like, oh, you know, that's good. Okay, well, we're going to da-da-da. And so got all that taken care of. And then the people from the insurance company called me back to let me know that everything is set and everything is approved. And so really the only thing I'm dealing with now is that spike in, you know, water, me and water today, you know. But, but what I want to say is, in sharing all that that happened and the craziness that happened today, I prayed first and I talked to the Lord and then I remember because see because because here's the thing what we put out and this is what the Lord has really been showing me about our marrying one another so if I was to get on the phone and call these people who it's a job for them and I'm like yelling at them if I was to do that that would mess their day and that would make them feel but it's not their fault right so I needed to control my roar, <laughs> I needed to control my attitude. And the first thing in controlling is remember who I represent. I represent the Lord. Therefore, in my representing the Lord, how I approach you, how I come to you matters because I represent him. And so in doing that, like in talking to him, First, I feel like it mattered in talking to the Lord first. I feel like when he says that he'll order my steps, when I'm talking to him and angels are dispatched to handle because I'm in front of the Lord, just like it kind of reminds me of when Abraham was visited by three and two left to go deal with Sodom and Gomorrah, but Abraham was still talking to the Lord, the one that was still with him. He was talking to the Lord and the angels that had left, they went to go deal with the situation, but they dealt with it based on what they were told. But, but like, I see all that. I see all that. And I feel like everything worked out the way it did, which, like, everything worked out perfectly the medicine i'm supposed to take i would now take and my 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 prescription is good for 25 years like <laughs> 20, thank you lord thank you lord 25 years it's good to 2050 um uh i just i i really believe that that was god and so now here's why I want to share or I wanted to share that with this that I'm getting ready to share. So this morning when I got up, like I said, it was really important with, to me to sit before the Lord. And I was allowed to go back to Malachi because I never did finish my Malachi studies. Right. And so I want to like finish that up now. And so as I went to Malachi chapter three. I was looking over it like I'm able to pick up in verse 7 of Malachi chapter 3. But instead of me going to verse 7, because it was such a time break since I've been here with these Malachi studies, I kind of wanted to look at the preceding verses, which is verse um, 5 and 6. And, of course, you can't look at verse 5 with it, without looking at verse 4. So what I wrote down, because I, I simply read over it. Like, but what I wrote down is this. I said that it really stands out to me that the offerings of the priests greatly affects the offering. It impacts the offerings of everybody else. The, the offering of Judah, which represents the government, and the offering of Jerusalem, which represents the church, those offerings was not accepted until the offerings of the priests was was until the priesthood was cleaned up 
and they were offering offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Look, this is what it says. It says, verse 3, he will sit as a refiner, talking about Jesus, he will sit as a refiner, like a refiner's fire, right? Refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, which is the priesthood. He says, and purge them as gold and silver. Now, if you seen any, if you have not seen any of the previous Malachi studies, gold represents um, authority, it represents kingship, and silver represents um, priesthood. So, and that's in one of the other videos. So it says that they, talking about these sons of Levi, this priesthood, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. It says, then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. So once the Levites was cleaned up, God, and God says it in Ezekiel chapter 9, if you look at chapter 8 verse, because you can't look at chapter 9 and, and miss what's happening, you got to find out chapter 8, what God was saying and what was angering him. And so then in chapter 9 was the result of what was going on in chapter 8. God starts with his house first. It starts with the priesthood first. And then everybody else. So after the after the priesthood comes the leaders, Judah. After the priesthood, then comes the leaders, Judah. Then comes Jerusalem, the church. It says, verse 4, then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord. As in the days of old, as in former years. And then comes the world. So God will start with his house first and it will go in order. The priesthood, the government, kingship, government, the people of God, and then the world. It says, and and I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerer, sorcerers that represents witchcraft. Everybody that's mixed up in witchcraft, but you but you're still not gonna get judged until after God deals with his house first. But even still, you're still gonna get judged. Witchcraft. Um, against adulterers, that's infidelity, unfaithfulness, um, it says, or uh, sexual immorality, in infidelity, unf unfaithfulness, against perjurers, that's liars, it says, against those who exploit wage earners, it mentions the wage earners first, so this is unfair practices or injustice, but you, we're talking about for those, because slavery is not... Okay, slavery, um, wage earners, employees. A lot of times employees don't even realize that they're slaves because they're getting money, they're getting paid for the work, so they don't understand that they're slaves. And so when they read in God's word about slavery, they don't even really get that <laughs> you're talking about being employed to somebody else where you're working for somebody else for a piece of money. So therefore, all of y'all workers out here, all of you business owners out here who are not paying your workers like you should, it says against those who exploit wage earners, those who people are working for you and you're not paying them. It says God's, God, God's against that. This is Malachi chapter three, verse five. It says, and widows and orphans. So those who are widows and those who are orphans, when you're taking advantage of them, you know, um, God is going to deal with you. It says, and against those who turn away an alien. Against those who turn away an alien. Um, that's somebody that's unmerciful. It says, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Now, I was getting ready to deal with that part. God sent me back. <laughs> like he always do i love it when he does that because he's not letting me miss nothing that's why i'd be so many videos like back to back to back to back because he would send me back and so he sent me back and he sent me back to look at verse number three the latter part of verse three um where it says or yeah like the latter part of verse three the first part of verse four Let's see, was it the first part of verse 4? It was, it was, it was the first part of verse 4 where it says, Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord. So I got sent to go look at that. And that's what took me to Malachi chapter 1, right? 
So it was actually verse 11 that I was supposed to be looking at. Malachi chapter 1 verse 11 where it says from the rising of the sun even to its going down my name shall be great among the Gentiles. It says in every place incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the nations says the lord of hosts so it started there but i ended up like i always do going back to see you know because it said then for no um for from the rising of the sun even going to my name should be great among the gentiles okay so anyway it sent i ended up getting sent back or starting at the beginning because i wanted to know and understand like why would he say that and so i ended up at verse six although i had read everything else i started at the beginning but it was verse six and verse six is what got me here but verse six is talking about polluted offering and the thing about it is in again in chapter three the levites having getting cleansed up the way they were and purified and refined like fire see they went through the intensity of it they they're refined like fire like a launderer's soap and once their offerings are um offerings of righteousness or offerings done in righteousness then it says the offerings of judah and jerusalem will be pleasing to the lord and so i've being sent back um i'm looking now at polluted offerings and so verse number six that's the verse that i was reading before i left out this morning for all this other stuff to happen and in verse six it really stood out to me because god says a son will honor his father and a slave will honor his master or a servant will honor his master in other words some of you all really like y'all jobs and you talk about y'all jobs because you like what you're doing. And, and so you, you speak about, it says, a son will honor his father and a servant his master. But God says, he says, if I am the father, not a father, but the father. He says, if I am the father, where's my honor? If I am a master, where's my reverence? says the lord of hosts to you priests who despise my name he says where's my honor you're talking about everything else you're honoring everything else you're even honoring yourselves but where's mine where's my honor and that stood out to me because i don't know that many know that the word lord like when you say jesus is your lord and savior i don't know that you know what you're saying when you say that See, we know that Jesus is a savior. We know what he did on the cross. We could call that off the, off the top, like what he did, his sacrifice, what he went through for us. He shed his blood. He died for us. That's our savior. But when you call him a master, your, ma your Lord, when you call him your Lord, basically you are saying that he is master over me. The, another, the Hebrew word for Lord is Adonai. I'm going to say that again. The Hebrew word for Lord is Adonai. A-D-O-N-A-I. Adonai. And Adonai <clears throat> means, it means Lord, but it also means master of me. So when somebody is the master over you, they get to tell you what to do. When somebody is your master, they get to tell you what to do. They run in the shots, not you. And you get to follow what they say, dude. So that's why if you think about it in Luke chapter 6, verse number 46, Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I tell you to do? Because <laughs> Lord means master of me. So why are you saying that I'm the master of you, but you won't listen to what I tell you to do? That's what he's saying. So um, here in verse number six of Malachi chapter one, God is saying a son honors his father. When your father, when your parent tells you what to do, tells you to do something, you do it. You honor them by doing it. Um, 
a servant his master, a servant, a son honors his father and a servant his master. A servant honors the master. You honor your boss when your boss can come and say to you, well, Mr. Da-da-da or Miss Da-da-da, I need you to go in the back and do da-da-da and you go and do it. You say, okay, and you go and do it. So God is saying, you honor your parent. You honor your father. You honor your master, which is your boss at work. You honor that boss at work so that you keep your job, so that you can get paid. He said, if I am the father and I'm a master, he says, where's my honor? Where's my reverence? So I decided, I'm like, you know what? I need to understand this. <laughs> so I'm like, let me go look this up. So I did. I looked up the word honor first. Honor is high respect great esteem, glory, tribute, fame, credit, importance. And I'm like, okay, I know those words, but do I really know what they mean? So let's start with honor first with the word esteem. Esteem is to respect and admire. God is saying, where is my respect? Where are you admiring me? I said, okay, I need to understand what that means. So respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their ability, their quality, and their achievements. And so I'm, I'm looking at this like respect, like God deserves our respect, our great, our high respect. Now, now we respect people. But God deserves our high respect. That's honor. When you highly respect somebody. Tribute, an act, statement, or gift that is intended to show gratitude, respect, or admiration. When you go to, I'm going to use Sunday just passed. So I'm going to use Sunday. When you go into a service and you go and you praise and you worship, listen. That should be a gift or act or a statement that is intended to show gratitude or respect. Or am my doing these videos is my tribute. It is an act where I am making statements of gratitude, of respect and admiration for God and for God's work. Like that's what this, when you're talking to somebody about God, we it, it should be a conversation of gratitude and respect and admiration. Like who you admire, you talk about. What you're grateful for, you talk about. Everything that happened today, like the favor that the Lord gave me with the insurance company, um, with both insurance, the, the dental first, where they, they, let me know all the time. See, they're going to send me this thing in the mail, and it's going to say to me that I owe da 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 da. And I'm like, uh uh, that's not what y'all told me before I made the appointment. I'm like, what happened here? Because I need to know. Because look, look, listen. And so when they they like, let me put your health in a minute. Let me go check this out. Oh, okay. There was an error that happened, and it's all covered. You fan. I'm like, okay, thank you. Like, <laughs> dental the medical like what's happening here because like you're saying that i can never get this and now i have to take a medicine that will actually do me harm like like you know what's happening and they go over everything and they're like wait you know da 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 you know and you're fine i'm like okay thank you you know like when i tell you that I believe with everything in me that this stuff happened, the favor that I received in this area is because I have favor with God. I believe that this stuff happened because of the fact that I sought the Lord first to help me check myself, help me check my mouth, help me check my attitude, help me get this and get this together so that I can get on the phone and make this phone call and be respectful. Like, the entire time I'm talking, I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for taking the time to look into this for me. I appreciate you, like, like showing that appreciation and showing that, like, and this is what it says. Um, okay, so reverence. The next word, reverence, because God says, where's my honor? Where's my reverence? So reverence is, a deep, again, a deep respect. 
that word deep. Now, I already looked up respect of feeling an admiration for someone or something elicited by their ability, their quality, and their achievements. So to deeply respect somebody, that stands out to me because of the fact that over the weekend, I had been talking with my son about the depth, about like Genesis, um, Genesis chapter 1. And how God said that his spirit was hovering over the deep. And then like really looking at deep. Like it's bottomless. Like like it is so deep. Like when it talks about the darkness of the deep. Because it just goes so far down or so far up. That you cannot see either way. Like, like we can only see so far. But and we know that out of space is dark because of the fact that like when people go up and they're doing these different shows or whatever they're showing like the the blackness and what lights it up is the stars and but it's there's there's more to it than what we can see and how far man has been there's even more to that there's a depth you know the scripture speaks of the heaven as being god's throne the throne the heavens has been a throne and the earth has been a footstool. So there's more to it. There's so much more. And so that helps me to appreciate that word deep. And so reference is a deep respect. That like there's no bottom to it. It's deep. It says a uh, claim. A claim is enthusiastic and public praise can y'all feel my enthusiasm because <laughs> i get like i get loud i get giggly like can y'all can you feel my enthusiasm for enthusiasm for what it is that i am speaking and can you hear the praise that i have for god my sharing this with you is a public statement when i upload these videos it is public like anybody can see it god says where's my reverence where is anybody who is publicly praising me publicly adoring me or or is enthusiastic about it like like serving god is amazing it's amazing um admiration respect and warm approval um is another word for reverence let me give you the definitions for reverence because what i did was i looked up all these definitions so it's deep respect acclaim admiration appreciation all worship adoration praise i, I wrote all twice <laughs> veneration so um appreciation this recognition and enjoyment of the good qualities and so like i'm enjoying the fact that i was able to get this stuff done and how it all worked out i'm grateful to god praise the expression of respect and grat i just said i was grateful to god the expression of respect and gratitude as an act of worship um all is the feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear and wonder worship is the feeling of or expression of reverence and adoration adoration is deep love and respect veneration is great respect reverence um so there was a second definition for the word reverence and it said to regard and treat with deep respect and it was that one it was that one sorry my heart kind of felt a little funny it was that one so that one um the words were rever revere respect admire appreciate cherish value prize treasure adulate analyze and lionize and i want to go over these i really want to go over these because god is saying he says if i am the father the creator of everybody if i'm the father and if i am a master where is my honor and where is my reverence and that's what like god is having a problem with this because we haven't been giving it to them to him we haven't been now you think going to church is you know i love the lord so i'm gonna go to church do you love the lord even when you're not at church and this is not against the church let's get this understood this is not against the church I am talking to us as a people and how we treat God. How we treat God. Do I truly revere him? Which is a feeling of deep respect and admiration. 
Who do you deeply respect? Who do you deeply admire? Like, who do you admire? Who, uh, with a person, with a human being, think of a human being, a human being that you actually admire. Think of, for a second, how you feel when you admire a human being and why it is that you admire this human being. Now, do you feel about God the same way? But deeper. Respect is to admire something deeply. Admire is to regard with respect and warm approval. Warm approval. Have you ever thought of approval being warm or hot or cold? Like it says warm approval. That's that feeling that you have on the inside of you. Um, that feeling like you really, really like this person. Um, it says appreciate to recognize the full worth of. We talk about God, like in the in the process of church services, we talk about God. But do you talk about God when you're not at church? Do you talk about God at your job? How do you feel about somebody talking about God? Like, like. Do you realize the full worth of him? And if you do realize his full worth, do you value your interaction with your being able to listen long time ago before Jesus came to earth, before King Jesus died for us? In order for somebody to worship, they had to go through somebody else. They had to bring animals and, and offer of these sacrifices. But when Jesus did what he did for us, and he opened the veil, we don't have to go through another man. I don't have to wait for Sunday to praise God. I don't have to wait for, so I don't have to make sure I can afford an animal and that the animal's up to par. I don't have to do none of that. Like, I don't have to do none of that. In the name of Jesus Christ, I can boldly go into the throne room where our Heavenly Father, Almighty God, the Father of King Jesus sits and where King Jesus sits at his right hand, I can boldly, in the name of King Jesus, come before the throne room and give thanks and give praise and give worship. I can boldly go into the throne room if I'm afraid about anything, if I'm scared, if there's a burden that I'm carrying. King Jesus says, throw your burden down on me. Give it to me. I got you. I got you. Do we appreciate, do we recognize the full worth of what it is that we have? Because if we do, why then are we so quick to toss it aside? Don't make, you know, people that make the comment, don't, don't let the old me come out. Really? Because when you allow that old you to come out, you're basically tossing aside. That's why I had to pray first. And I had to ask the Lord, help me. Because he gives us his grace to help us. To keep that old person down. Help me control my mouth. Help me get my attitude in order. I, I represent you. So I need help. And he helped me. He helped me. Um, value. Well, cherish is next. To protect and care for lovingly. When you cherish something, you are funny about it. You don't want everybody touching it. When you cherish. I cherish this, this that I have. This ability that I have to sit and study in God's word the way I do. I cherish this because I know. This is not something that everybody has. I'm not taking this for granted. 
I don't know how long I'm going to have this. So I'm not taking this for granted. I want to make sure that I am valuing it. Is to estimate the monetary worth of something. This is so valuable. This time that I have to sit before the Lord with my notebook, my pen, and, and, and my Bible. Like this time that I have to be able to do the research. to be able to, This time that I have to be able to sit before the Lord with no distractions. It's nobody here but me. This time that I have to be able to talk to the Lord with my mouth, with my words, to open my mouth, to open my lips and give forth my voice and talk to the Lord about everything. This is valuable to me. And I'm grateful for it. To prize something is to value extremely high. This is a gift. This is a prize. There is nothing more valuable than this right now and i'm sharing it with y'all <laughs> but there's nothing more valuable everybody don't have this everybody it says to treasure to keep carefully i don't want to lose this i don't want to mishandle this um to adulate to praise excessively I talk about God everywhere. I was talking about I was I was in in the um doctor's office before my doctor came in and I was talking to my husband and I was telling my husband, you know, I really really appreciate you. And I pray for you often. I talk to the Lord about you and I I thank God for you because he blesses you to do what you do and that enables me to do what I do which is sit here and study and get into his word and dig into his word. I'm like, I appreciate this. And I want you to know. And my husband, <laughs> I'm about to tell y'all. He was like, pay attention to this time, you know. And, and they kind of like shut me because I was just talking about, I was just talking about God. And so, kind of shut me down. Anyway, it's okay. Anyway, um, to praise excessively, do you adulate God? He says, if then I am the father, Where's my honor? And if I am a master, where's my reverence? And that that's he's literally saying that. I literally had somebody say to me who was in a position of authority. I don't think that they were talking directly at me. They probably was talking to like I don't I just don't remember anybody else being there. I think they were talking to somebody else or just speaking out loud. I don't know. But I heard them say, I am a pastor about themselves. I'm a pastor on Sundays, on Monday through Friday, on Monday through Saturday. And I sat, and when that, that person said that, when I overheard that person say that, my, I thought to myself, I'm like, mm-mm. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not correct. That is not correct. Being a pastor, that's not something that you put on and take off like clothing. No, this is a life style this is a so so and, and it's a lifestyle of praise but here's something that i want y'all to know because i don't think i don't think anybody knows it and i know i'm going to be sharing it at some point if i haven't already but this is something that i want you to know in god's word it talks about our bodies being a temple right a temple a house of god where god fills us now, I'm not, I'm not talking to the world. Just this, it I, doesn't matter to me. I don't know who's watching this video. But for those of you who are watching and you actually gotten this far, I believe that you have a relationship with God. Because the average person who does not have a relationship with God would not be still listening to me talking about God. Okay? <laughs> so, God's word tells us that our bodies, your body, my body, that, that we are, this is why we say we are the church. Our bodies is the temple of the Most High. Look in 1 Corinthians. Look in 2 Corinthians. We are the, the temple. And God fills us, right? That's to be filled with the Holy Spirit. His, His Spirit resides in us, right? We're the temple, right? And so here's the thing. If this body is the house of God, God and Jesus said, He said, my Father's house will be a place of praise and what prayer uh, uh what did he say when he y'all go look it up go look it up remember when he made those whips 
and he whipped them people, them tax collectors and everything, and he whipped them up out of there, and he said, my father's house is a house of prayer. That's what he said. That's what he said. Now, I should actually be over by, um, yeah, I, I don't know how, how I should actually be over by the computer so I can look it up real quick for you. But y'all, go, you got it. Go look it up. Go Google it. He says, my father's house is a house of prayer. Now, if this is my father's house, our bodies, which is the temple of God, if this is the father's house, then I should be praying and praising God and worshiping God. I should be adulating God, which is to praise excessively i should be valuing god with extreme like valuing 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 my relationship with god to the utmost to the extreme highest i should be treasuring him to keep this carefully keep this which means that i ain't got time to let this body do some other stuff that is not reflective of my relationship with god because i don't want to defile my temple i don't want to defile. i need god with me i need him in me like anyway um adulate to praise excessively idolize now remember god said that we should not have no idols before him but do we actually understand what idolizing something is because we look at an idol as being some type of carved image then like there's this thing called um idol uh something idol american idol or something like it's a show and it's a show about the singers right and when people were on stage and we're clapping for them as they're singing or however and they're being like a water however um idolize is to admire is to revere is to love greatly or excessively so there's some people who have become idols to other people some and, and they're idols in that they are loved greatly we're going to call the name Beyonce because we know a lot of people know Beyonce. But Beyonce might not be your idol. Your idol can be a, a, um, a movie actor or actress that you really like. You know, your idol can be somebody else, some other singer. You know, it could be um, it's because it's somebody that you admire or revere or love great like you really like their music you down for all they music. that's idolize and god says have no other idol before me don't play somebody else before him we don't always understand what we're idolize lionize is to give a lot of public attention and approval to to treat as a celebrity lionize to treat as a celebrity to give a lot of public attention to so when you having these news like the news articles and they're reporting on it or the gossip columns they report they're lionizing these different ones lionizing is reverence it's another word for reverence isn't it ironic that jesus is called the lion of judah like do we even understand what we say when we call him the lion of judah the lion of the tribe of judah that's giving reverence to and revering and respecting. God says, where is mine? Where is mine? Have you pro pros? <laughs> Have you praised God excessively today? Adulated him today? Have you protected and cared for lovingly your relationship with him today you do it for your children if you have small children at home and you get up and you get them up you're caring for them and you're protecting them and caring for them god says what about me when you have different children you care for all of them and you have a husband you care for him god says what about me that's cherishing when you're protecting and caring for lovingly. That's cherishing. A definition of reverence. When you can recognize the full worth of somebody, God says, what about me? Can you see my, can't you see my worth? What about me? What about me? Where is mine? 
Where is mine? That part there. This is again verse six. God says this to the Lord of hosts. I mean, excuse me. It says, uh, says the Lord of hosts. God says this to you priests, to you priests who despise my name. Now remember, our bodies is a temple. So we then become the priests of this temple, not the brick and mortar. We talk, it, it starts with us first. It starts with us first. Our focus has been on something outside of ourselves. But God says, I started my house first. So it has to start here. We like to say that when we when we say, you know, look at yourself. Here's the scripture. Take the beam out your own eye, the rafter out your own eye before you can take the splinter out the eye of another. Yet yeah, start at home first. You start here first. To the priests who despise my name. So what happens is when we talk about priests or pastor, when we talk about that, we're looking outside of ourselves. Because we don't even realize that this is the temple. And that's what we're messing up. That's what we're messing up. That's where we are messing up. We don't recognize this is the temple. And so for those who are smoking, there was a person that had asked me about smoking. You know, is, is smoking wrong? And, you know, there's nowhere in the scripture that says to not smoke. There's literally no scripture that says do not smoke. But here's the principle behind that. When you start understanding these principles, you research what do smoking do to the body? It, 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 it clouds up, muckies up, defiles your lungs. People have done this research before. It, it, it pulls a tar down in your lung and it defiles your lung. And people who have smoked have ended up with cancer. Like this stuff happens. And so if this is the temple, why would I take anything into my body that will harm my body? And see, and that's the thing, like there's a scripture that says that if we destroy the body, that God will destroy us. Like I got to find that. I got to find that. I got, I got to make sure that I find that scripture. As a matter of fact, I'm going to edit this video and then I'm going to go find these scriptures and stick them in so you can see. And the significance, like when I read that, when I read that, it really sat with me because today I get it. But when I was younger, I didn't. I didn't. I heard, but it wasn't broken down to me so that I could understand. Nobody said to me a long time ago that this is the temple. Nobody said to me a long time ago that I am the church. A long time ago that I am the church. I, me. You are the church. Listen, don't look at me. You, you are the church. You are. Your body is the temple of God. God wants to reside with you. But as long as you're doing things to your body that, that will defile it, God cannot come and be with you like he wants to, like he wants to. And then what we do, what we've been trained to do is we want him when we want him, basically. When I want something, let me go pray. Sometimes sometimes a child, listen, look, a child would treat a parent like that. <laughs> a little child would treat a parent like that. They always get their hand out. Like, like uh, and, and parents have said to their children, money don't grow on trees. Money don't grow on trees like parents try to teach. But if we're not, if it's not being broken down to us, we're not going to understand it. And what happens is we go out and we do things or allow things. I allowed myself to be abused. I'm not going to sit and focus on what the former, because he's not in my life, not anymore. God has delivered me and brought me out of that. Another reason for me to praise God, looking back on where I've been and looking at where I am now. That's another reason why I thank God for my husband that I have now, because I have peace now. I have peace now. I don't want to take that for granted because I know. And sometimes he allows us to go through some stuff, go through some bad things so that we can appreciate the good. Because if all we had was good, 
We'd never understand and we take it for granted. I don't want to take for granted the blessings that God has given to me. I don't want to take for granted where I am today. I don't want to take for granted what I have today. I don't want to take for granted the time that I have. I appreciate it. And to appreciate something is to recognize the full worth of what I have. I did not recognize that as a child. And I'm dealing with things in my body still to this day, which is a residual effect of what I didn't appreciate before. But if you don't understand it that way, let's go look at King David. Let's go look at King David and what happened with him and Bathsheba. I'm going to look at the part where I'm, I'm actually turning to it now. Thank you, Lord, because the Lord has given this to me right now, even as we speak. I'm turning to it now. I know it's in 2 second, second Samuel, and I'm turning to, let's see, so King, I'm turning to it because of the fact of what Nathan said. Okay, here it is. Chapter 11 is where... Um, David messed up. So chapter 12 of 2 Samuel is where Nathan talks to, to David about everything. So I'm going to get right to the meat of it. So it's verse number 7. It says, then Nathan said to David, you are the man. That's after Nathan had did this parable and David had judged the parable. And then Nathan was like, you know, that's you. And so here Nathan says to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah, all 12 tribes. I gave that to you. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, even though, even though technically, technically David didn't, but technically David wrote the letter. See, Uriah couldn't read. David wrote the letter and gave it to Uriah to give to Abner, I think, or or Joab. He gave it to one of them that was in charge. And when he gave it to them, they read the letter and they positioned Uriah and Uriah got killed. So it says, you have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife. You have killed him with the sword of the people. And so, so look, look, God made it plain. Made it plain. He said, you killed him. You took his wife. And, and before David can say, no, I didn't. He said, you have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. You did that. You positioned him for that to happen. It says, now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me. So there was a residual that continues to happen after the fact. It says, because you have despised me, you have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did it secretly. But I will do this thing for all Israel before the sun. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. I have sinned against the Lord too in the past. And in my sin against the Lord in the past, I have these residuals too in my body. The issue with my knee. Probably the issue with my shoulder too. But I have these issues in my body that I'm dealing with as do the majority of the people on this earth because of the fact that we were not taught. 
so don't uh, so I'm I'm look there's no condemnation in Christ. I'm not holding this against you. But the thing is we are, we were not taught. We got to uh, we got to acknowledge this stuff. We were not taught or if it was told to us break it down. It wasn't broken down so that we could understand and that's what I'm doing here now. I am trying to share this stuff in a way that it can be understood so that now we have this responsibility to teach our children. And, and and if our children is grown and they already started making their own mistakes and they have their own thing, teach your grandchildren. Like like get them to understand it so that they can teach their children so that what happened is if, if we're teaching like we're supposed to, like God's word tell us to, like God's word tell us to. Like look, look, look. If we're doing it like we're supposed to, like God's word tell us to, where does God's word tell us to? I'm glad you asked. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. This is what it says. Um, this book of the law. Is this the part here? Hold on. Or is it, this, is it Deuteronomy? Is it Joshua or is it Deuteronomy? I'm going to do Joshua. So Joshua chapter 1. It says. I'm going to start at verse. 3. Every place that the sole of your foot would tread upon. I have given you. As I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon. As far as the great river. The river, Euph the river Euphrates. All the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage for this people. For to this people you should divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe and do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the mouth, I mean this book of the mouth, <laughs> this book of the, of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hold on because I want to find that scripture where it talks about our teaching it to our children I want to find that part because it because it's probably in Deuteronomy where we were told to speak of this to the children right when we're on the road let's see let's see if I could find it um do -do 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 -do. If I don't find it, I'm going to say, like I said before, that I'm going to find the scripture and I'm going to post this since I'm going to edit this video anyway. I'm going to find it and I'm going to post this so that you are able to see it. Because we're told to teach the children when we're on the road, when we're sitting at home. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can find it. Like, this is so important that we know these things. Because if we're not doing it, if we're not speaking of the Lord, if we're not, let's see. Teach. Found it. Thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 7. This is what it says. I'm going to start at verse number four. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you shall today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. 
You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. It says, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. But he's telling us to talk about it, like, like all the time, talk about it. Talk about God, are you doing that? God says, where is my reverence? Where's my honor? He said, look, look, he said, I'm going to read this again, verse 7. You should teach them, talking about his laws, you should teach them diligently to your children. You should talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. That covers all day. <laughs> that covers all day. God says, where's my reverence? Where are you showing that you have a deep respect and adoration of me? Admiration of me? Are you Are you really, like, do you really? Because you're not talking about me. That's just me saying that. Respecting, to admire something deeply. To regard with respect or warm approval. To appreciate, to recognize the full worth of, to cherish, which is to protect and care for lovingly, to value, which is to estimate the worth of. It says monetary worth, but listen, when something is so, so, so value, valuable, you can't put a price tag on it. That's how valuable it is. To treasure is to keep carefully, to prize is to value extremely high. Do you value your relationship with God? Do you value your relationship? Like, like if you really valued your relationship with God, you would spend time with him. Just like when you are in a relationship with a human being. If, if you're supposed to be um, in this relationship and it's a loving relationship, but they're not spending time with you, where's the value? A lot of times divorces come across the woman before the divorce come across when they start the, the woman and the man start falling apart. The woman is feeling like you don't value me. You don't value me. To adulate praise excessively, to lionize, to give a lot of public attention and approval to, to treat as a celebrity. I'm just saying. God says, where is my honor? And that stood out to me. And that's chapter one of Malachi, verse number six. I still got to get to the rest of those verses, but I want to go over this with the polluted offerings because God is detailing this. He's detailing what is polluting these offerings. And in Malachi chapter three, we're being told that this is going to be corrected. That's why Jesus is sitting as a refiner's fire. And he's going to correct the priesthood first. And then the leaders and his people. And then the world. All right, I got to go. I got to go. But I hope y'all understood that. And um, yeah, I got to go. And spend some more time with God. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much for allowing me this time to share with you my testimony in my studies. Okay, bye. <laughs>